Cardinal Joseph Silpi. My presentation has two parts. In the first part, I would like to have a study on the Diaconia in scripture and the tradition. In the second part, I would like to present the Diaconia in our times, especially in the context of the Suro Malabar Church. Because of the shortage of time, I leave the biblical and the theological part and directly enter into the diaconial activity in the Suro Malabar Church mainly. Now I come to the present task of sharing the pastoral experience of diaconia in the Suro Malabar Church. The Suro Malabar Church was founded by St. Thomas the Apostle in 52 AD in South India, Kerala. It belongs to the East Syriac family of churches with Syriac as their original liturgical language. Our present major archbishop is His Eminence George Cardinal Alan Chedi, a close friend of our major archbishop. His efficient and effective leadership has been instrumental for a solid unity among the Suro Malabarians, as well as a wider acceptability of our tradition among other churches. As of today, there are 32 emperors, dioceses, one exarchate, and two apostolic visitations in the Suro Malabar Church. 13 emperors are in Kerala, in the canonical territory, India, and the rest are outside Kerala. There are altogether 59 bishops, and among these, 18 uh, bishops emeriti. Outside India, we have the Diocese of Chicago in the United States, and another in Melbourne, in Australia, and a third one in Preston, in Great Britain, and an exarchate in Canada, and an apostolic visitator in Rome for the whole Europe. The total number of the Suramalabar faithful is 4,900,000. That is almost 49 lakhs. The total number of the Suramalabar migrants is 13 lakhs. Among these, outside Kerala, but within India, the total number is more than 5 lakhs. Outside India, the number comes up to 7 lakhs. The Suramalabar Church boasts of the three canonized saints, Alphonsa from Mayum Diocese, Chavrabriakos from Carmelite, and Saint Euphrasia, and two blessed, one Father Kunyachan from Mayum Diocese, Mariam Theresia, and two venerable, one Matthew, also from my own diocese, and another one Bishop Thomas. And we have 13 servants of God. Definitely, the recently canonized Mother Teresa is a precious gift uh, to the whole of India. Our church has altogether 4,333 diocesan priests and 4,319 religious faiths. Suramalabar Church has 2,875 parishes. Large number of candidates from the Suramalabar Church have joined the Latin Church and are serving there as Latin priests and sisters. There are 27 Latin bishops at present from the Suramalabar Church and we have a total number of 36,000 religious sisters at present. We have altogether 17 major seminaries in the Suramalabar Church with more than 3,000 priest candidates. <coughs> B. 
We have a history, more or less, similar to U.S. Here below I give some of the landmarks. In 1852, St. Thomas the Apostle landed at Kerala. Then we have a period of Latinization, begins with the landing of Vasco de Gama from Portugal in the 14th century. Then comes the Diamber Synod in the 15th century and enforced the Latinization for the whole Suramalabar Church. And the history moves like that. And in 1993, the Suramalabar Church is blessed with the major archbishop. And as I said, the present major archbishop is Cardinal Alim Chiri. Now I move to some of the concerns of diaconia in the Suramalabar Church. First one, concern for the oppressed. Dalit Christians, means the lowest caste in India, there are still caste systems, and Dalits are supposed to be the lowest one. They are exploited, discriminated, and their rights are being ignored, and their politic situation remains unchanged in the society even now. Under the label of DCMS, the church has established a number of initiatives for the uplift of Dalit Christians and thus a new milieu for them so that they may be highly valued and well accepted in the society and the church. The Surabhava Christian community did play a decisive role in leading the nation to the tangible social and cultural progress by fighting against the prevailing superstitions and inhuman social practices. When the upper caste domination was in its full swing, the low caste sections were oppressed and treated like outcasts of the society. It was the Christian community that treated first against this oppressive social discrimination through its various enemies. Second one, home for the homeless. The church is committed to endeavor to have housing for all. All the upper case take this as a primary concern of the church. In collaboration with the different governmental projects, the church has constructed more than thousands of shelters, homes, asylums for the homeless. Moreover, taking into account the spirit of the year of mercy, Many parishes have given priority in constructing homes for the poor within the parish territory. Third one, care for the persons with the disabilities and their rehabilitation. Swarmalava Church renders extensive services in this regard. Concretely speaking, majority of such institutions in Kerala are run by the church. One of the aims in ministering to those physically challenged is to rehabilitate and reintegrate them rather than simply providing homes or places of refuge. Fourth one, education to all. The church provides education to all the people. Special education is provided for the neglected children, the financially disadvantaged, the psychologically sick, and the delinquents. Fifth one, help for the physically and the mentally challenged. The church does ministry to individuals and their families challenged by disorders, causing disturbances of thinking, feeling, and acting by running a good number of institutions and giving them nursing care and love. Sixth one, care for the sick. Through many dispensaries, palliative centers, clinics, and hospitals, the church provides total therapy and Christian health to the sick and the dying. About 2,614 health and charitable institutions in Kerala are run by the Siro Balabar Church. Seventh one, jail ministry and Jesus fraternity. 25 years ago, it began as a private initiative in our church. Slowly, it became popular. The hierarchy discerned that it is a crucial and fruitful ministry. They endorsed it wholeheartedly 
and gave this ministry full support in its initial years. Jesus' fraternity is a fellowship of prayer and fraternity, serving the lost, the least, and the last, especially in the prisons of Kerala. This ministry focuses its attention on the correction, reformation, and the rehabilitation of those in prison, the welfare and integral development of their children, families, the victims, and uh, their families. Paragraph. The ministry attempts to help not only the prison inmates, but also their children and uh, families on the road to a positive return to their normal life in the society. It is estimated that uh, before the advent of Jesus fraternity and similar ministries, 75 percent of the prisoners who were re released from the prisons of Kerala committed crime and were imprisoned again. It is reported that uh, this rate has been reduced to 20 due to the effect of the activities of Jesus fraternity and similar ministries. It one home mission. The family is not an isolated phenomenon, but indeed is an integral unit essential to society. The ruin or growth of any community immediately corresponds to the compactness and the stability of families. No community can exist or flourish without safeguarding the sanctity and the nobility of families. At this juncture, it is remarkable to note the high regard the Suramalabar Church grants to the welfare of families. The blowing example is the Department of Family Apostolate, counseling centers, and especially the home mission programs. For home mission, religious sisters go in groups to various parishes and mission stations. They stay for a length of time in the parish and visit all the families. The women folk, especially, have an opportunity to share their worries, both spiritual and psychological to the trained religious. Ninth one, care homes. In the Surabhava Church, there are hundreds of care homes where the sickly and the aged people are given protection and care. Tenth one, ministry for the drug addicts. This is one of the main concerns of our ecclesiastical diaconia. In our diocese, there are various centers for this ministry run by priests and sisters. The government also appreciates it very well, and we get uh, partial funding from them. Here and one, get together of the basic Christian communities. 20, 25 family members come together for prayers, sharing and helping of those in need. The pastors get acquaintance with the faithful and their lived situations. All the parish priests of our church normally do regular house visits in their parishes. A house visiting priest means a church going people. Twelfth, Bible conventions. In almost all the dioceses of the Surabhavar Church, we have annual Bible conventions for five, six days. Thousands of people participate in such conventions. Thirteen, the ecumenical and the interreligious aspects of the diaconia are very relevant, especially in the context of the Surabhavar Church in India. Specifically speaking, diaconia is the foundation of the existence of the church and simultaneously of the Surabhavar Church. The very existence of the church is justified by her service to the neighbor. The church is not sent for herself, but to the world. By rendering service to all people, irrespective of religion, race, racial and political status, the church offers inclusive diaconia. Okay. Giving a helping hand to the sister churches should be an important part of the diaconia of the church. Sharing the spiritual and material goods among the churches, vocations, ministries, infrastructure, etc. 
is of great importance. The Suramarabhar factory is always giving priority to this diaconial dimension. From all our dioceses, there are diocesan priests working in the Latin churches, especially abroad on the basis of Fidei Dono, 15th. To foster diaconia and the koinonia <coughs> among bishops. <coughs> Apart from the two scheduled synods every year, we have provincial synods, monthly recollections of bishops on regional basis, diocesan gatherings, interdiocesan gatherings of bishops, gatherings of bishops on linguistic basis, provincial bishops, gatherings, etc. Concluding remarks. Apart from the dogmatic and the doctrinal differences for the divisions among the church, the root cause of the division is the lack of care of the local churches for one another. The absence of diaconia between them, without which the vertical communion with the God, though not broken, becomes a further power of alienation and isolation. In this way, the divine truth seen and lived as communion loses its reference to the relations between the local churches. Without diaconia among the churches, the glacial koinonia is a mere speculation deprived of the inner power. In a church where there are different churches with the vibrant thoughts of theology and faith, and in a world where there are different religions, the place for an ecumenical diaconia, interreligious diaconia, and the diaconia of dialogue are also very important. The churches also have to be on their guards against international terrorism that springs up in different parts of the world. There are religious motives behind these acts of terrorism. There are spiritual, social, and political dimensions to the Aconia. The greatest sin of the people of God is that they have neglected the theological, vertical dimension of the Aconia in favor of a glaciological and a horizontal ones. Today, we are able to look at past divisions with hindsight. Divisions in the church begin where the concern of the church for the world, the diaconia of the world, localizes and absolutizes in the unilateral privileging of particular church. Particular churches in their separated situation increase their isolation with the passage of time. Isolation of churches is the greatest problem. Yeah. The church becomes the church militant in a provincial way. The Arconia must be in view of Koinonia. Last paragraph. Saint Bonaventure says, the day you no longer burn with love, many others will die of cold. Saint Ambrose is very clear. Where there is mercy, there is the spirit of the Lord. Where there is rigidity, there are only his ministers. The expression of origin is very captivating. Ignite your neighbor by your seal. Achendut are the proximos. In all this, what we see is the earnest desire of the church to be at the service of the others. Holy Virgin Mary is a typical example and a vessel of mercy and the service, the Aconia. Her visit to Elizabeth is a typical example of this. She is the real vessel of mercy. She can remove the cataract that prevents us from seeing Christ in people. She can remove the myopia that fails to see the needs of others, which are the needs of the incarnate Lord, as well as the hyperopia that cannot see the details of others. Thank you very much.
Ісусі Йосифові, справді його, його слово є дуже дуже промовистим. Не тільки, не тільки щодо цифр, правда, але щодо, я би сказав, навіть тої живучості, 